Hi, welcome back to another recorded lecture for, for CEGR 3143, Hydraulics and Hydrology. I'm Jim Bowen. This is Kinematics 2, the second of two lectures on kinematics. Last time, Kinematics 1, we were talking qualitatively. This time we're going to talk quantitatively to a quantitative analysis of velocity distributions. So if we have a velocity u, a vector property, that we find that it could vary both spatially, that is it could be a function of x, y, and z, and it could also vary in time, that is this some component of our velocity vector could have a component that, that varies in time. And just to make clear, the vector nature of this velocity vector is that we decompose it into a part that is in the x direction, a part that is in the y direction, and a part that's in the z direction. We have three separate functions, u, v, and w, that define the velocities in the x, y, and z directions. And each of these, u, v, and w, can themselves be functions of location, that is x, y, z, and f functions of time. Next, let's look at the things that we might calculate given a velocity vector. First, as we've done before, we might average in time and average in space our velocity distribution to get a cross-sectional average velocity. We might also look at places and times where the um, to see what our velocity magnitude might be and the velocity direction at a particular point in time and at a particular point in space. And a third thing we might want to calculate is the acceleration vector. The acceleration vector, which is shown in equation 4.3 from the textbook, we in indicate with a with the vector indicator. So little a is defined as the local derivative of the velocity vector plus the u component of velocity times the gradient of u in the x direction, the v component of velocity times the gradient in the y direction of the velocity vector u, and then the velocity in the z direction w times the gradient of the velocity vector in the z direction. Note that every term in our acceleration vector is itself a vector property. And what, we've, what we're showing here in 4.3 can also be shown with a more compact notation that the acceleration vector is d dt, shown with these capital Ds in the numerator and the denominator. It's d dt of the velocity vector where this ddt is a material or substantial derivative operator. What we mean by it's an operator is that we can take the material or substantial derivative of any property, any you could put any property variable inside the parentheses here and find its material or substantial derivative by taking the local derivative and then finding the spatial derivatives the the partial derivatives in the x, y, and z direction and multiplying them times u, v, and w. There's an example of this material or substantial derivative that's done in a one dimensional, a one dimensional example on the lecture for Bernoulli 1, page 8. So refer back to that if you're interested in, in an example of a material derivative. Okay, so we could take the acceleration terms and write them out individually, that is the x, y, and z components of the acceleration vector that's shown in the text in equation 4.4. .4. So a sub x is the material or substantial derivative operator of u, so it's the local derivative du dt plus u times du dx plus v times du dy plus w times du dz. And so you can see what we've done here is we have taken both the local and what's called the convective acceleration for u to get the x component of the acceleration vector. When we get the y component of the acceleration vector, we take the material substantial derivative of v by taking both the local derivative and the u, v, and w multiplied times the spatial derivatives in x, 
y, and z. And a sub z follows that same pattern. And so what you see is each of these terms, or each of these components of the acceleration vector, ax, ay, az, have a common form that the first term is the local acceleration of whatever component you're looking at, and then the convective acceleration for that particular component. This idea of taking a material derivative can also be applied to other fluid properties. For example, temperature, which we're designating here with a capital T. If we take the material de derivative of temperature, we get the dt, the local temporal derivative of t, and then the convective change in the temperature. As you move with a x, y, and z, components of velocity u, v, and w. This local derivative term is going to be non-zero if and only if our specification for the temperature is unsteady and this convective part of the total change in the temperature is going to be non-zero if and only if one, there's at least a component here that's non-zero in the velocity vectors and also if spatial gradients in the temperature exist. You need both things to get uh, the convective change in temperature. Okay, let's go on to do an example finding the acceleration vector. Just to give it again, the acceleration vector is a sub x times i plus a sub y times j plus a sub z times k. A x, a y, and a z are the acceleration vectors in the x, y, and z directions. And here's an example specification of our velocity vector given components u, v, and w. We say that u is equal to x plus y minus 4t, v is equal to 4x minus y, and w is equal to 0. This is a specification for a 2D unsteady flow. It's 2D or two-dimensional because two of the three components of velocity are non-zero. In this case, W is equal to zero. And it's unsteady because one of the U or the V specifications has some variation in time. In this case, it's only U. U is equal to X plus 4Y and then a component that says that u is going to change as the time changes. Let's go through then and get the three components of the acceleration vector. Doing the, the easy one first, we'll find that a sub z is 0 in the case that w is 0 because if w is at all times and every place 0, then there are no temporal derivatives. There's no change temporally in w, so the dw dt term is zero and there's also not any gradient spatially in W. It's, z it's zero everywhere. So dwx is zero, dwy is zero, dwdz is zero. That means that all terms in the a sub z equation are zero. So a sub z is equal to zero. And next let's go on and do a sub x, that is du dt, and we're going to do the, first the local derivative, du dt, that is looking for spatial changes, sorry, looking for temporal changes in the x component of velocity. We take the partial derivative with respect to t of u, and when we do that, it's as if the, we hold x and y as a constant when we take the temporal derivative of those, it equals zero. But this third term in the u specification does have a, a, a temporal, there's a temporal part, and so d dt of minus 4t is equal to minus 4. That's our local derivative, and then next we need to do the convective derivative parts, the con convective acceleration parts. First we do u du dx. So here's u. Now we look at the u vector and differentiate it, take it the partial derivative with respect to x. So you can see that this is going to give us 0, this is going to give us 0, but du dx of x, I mean d, d, well, well this first term will give us 1. 
So then that x plus y minus 4t should be a parentheses there multiplied by 1. So the u du dx term is x plus 4y minus 4t. Going on to do the v du dy, here's our specification for v. And then we look for variations in the y direction. So we're doing du dy. So we're looking at our u specification and doing a partial differentiation with respect to y. This term is 0. This term is 1. This term is 0. So we get our v times du dy, which is 1. So the second, the v du dy term in our a sub x is 4x minus y. Because w is 0, then w du dz is 0. Putting together all four pieces of the a sub x, we get minus 4 plus x plus y minus 4t plus 4x minus y. The y and the minus y cancel. The x plus the 4x becomes 5x minus 4t minus 4. So our a sub x is 5x minus 4t minus 4. And then going on to do the a sub y term, we look at our, first we want dv dt. If you look back at v, you see that it has no no temporally varying part, so dv dt is 0. So dv dt is 0, and then next we take u times dv dx. So let's look up here to get dv dx. dv dx, this term will be 4, and that term will be 0. So dv dx is 4, and we multiply that times u. So here we have u times dv dx. And then here we have y times dv dy. Let's see why dv dy is equal to minus 1. We, we differentiate this partial differentiation with respect to y. That's 0. That's minus 1. And so we have dv dy is minus 1. And the two terms we have, actually the three terms, the first one is 0. Here's our du dx u dv dx, and here's our v d uh, v dy. u dv dx plus v du dy. Sum up those parts. u dv d, the u dv dx is 4x plus 4y minus 16t. 4x plus 4y minus 16t, and this gives us minus 4x plus y. So here's our a sub y. And then we collect the terms 4x minus 4x. That cancels 4y plus y becomes 5y. We have a minus 16t. So a sub y is equal to 5y minus 16t. And that's the end of this Kinematics 2 lecture. Thanks for listening. Bye.